ever watch the video, it's like, looking at it like, Aah. Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today, for those of you who you are watching, you already know this because you can see him. But for those of you who are listening, we have a special guest, Andrew. Hello. That's Andrew. I didn't know if I was supposed to say anything else. Well, no, that was pretty much what we brought you on for. All right. But uh, thanks, thanks for being here, and thanks for coming out, and thanks for coming all the way, and we really appreciate it. And uh, goodbye. <laughs> it was great being on the show. You guys are awesome. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We we have been uh, we've been slacking off for 15 minutes in preparation for our episode on procrastination. It seems apropos. So, yeah, we were procrastinating. We were we were we were technically preparing. Research. Yes, research. That's important. Um, and Andrew, uh, if you you as you know, we start the podcast with an icebreaker. And because you're our guest, you get to go first. What are you currently procrastinating on? Do not procrastinate on answering this question. Uh, we only have a little bit amount of time. I think the better question is what aren't I procrastinating on? Oh. That's a shorter list. Oh dear. <laughs> um, I am not editing a novel that's written. I am not editing another novel that's written. Oh my. And I'm not writing another novel that I... That is also written? That that would be confusing. (laughs) I'm not writing another novel that I have to write. That is... So those are three things I'm procrastinating on. that I I could go on, but I think those are the three important ones. Yes. Fair enough. Yeah. Fuck. I am procrastinating on finding appropriate healthcare facilitators, such as a family doctor, um, um, optometrist, a dentist, a physiotherapist. I discovered when I broke my ankle that not having a family doctor, which up until that point wasn't a problem, um, having a, not having a family doctor to check in with when it came to my broken ankle was a little bit of an inconvenience. So I'm definitely procrastinating on getting like uh, getting on to Healthcare Connect or whatever it's called yeah. to get myself a family doctor. Um, I have some dental future issues I can feel coming on that I should probably stay ahead of. I haven't checked to make sure that my prescription for my lenses are the same or haven't changed. And like I said, physiotherapy. So basically, you are you are procrastinating on slowly becoming a physical wreck. Yeah, I mean, no, I think he's accelerating. He's accelerating that. Yeah, actually, that's he's true. You're doing very well. Well, it's, it's, it's You're highly committed, it seems. Dedicated. It's one of those things where you don't notice that you don't have it or you don't need it until you really need it. You know, it's kind of like insurance. You know, what do I need to pay insurance for? Oh, that's right, because I can't pay for whatever it is that I need the insurance to cover for me. Fair enough. So that's what I am procrastinating on, and hopefully I'll start addressing those issues before they become catastrophic. What would you, if you wanted, if you wanted to, like, bet on that, how much? How much would you be willing to bet that you will address those issues before they become catastrophic? I'm just curious. It's unfair to make a bet about when you'll finish a novel. That's just rude. <laughs> That's next podcast. <laughs> uh, I would say... Well, the physiotherapist one I kind of need to do soon. Fair enough. Otherwise, um, it'll be really difficult to, to work out at the gym. You know, I've only been able to work out my upper body since breaking my ankle. So it'll be really hard to tackle those lower body issues. Squats and deadlifts. And oh, those lower body issues. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it'll be pretty hard to do that if my if I don't have proper uh, proper support and I can't wear that boot forever. <laughs> it's true. Dust boot. So I'm hoping that to fix the physiotherapy soon. Dentistry maybe shortly after that. So, I don't we'll know. Check, we'll check back. We'll, we'll, check, we'll back. check back, maybe. We'll stay tuned for the Huck, how are your teeth video, yeah. where I just stick a camera in Huck's mouth and, like, wiggle it around a lot. <laughs> Probably to some kind of polka. Yeah. Well, anyways, Jim, what are you procrastinating on? I am procrastinating on a couple of things. Uh, emails to my D&D players, though I did make a commitment that I would get those back uh, by the end of or, or the week, which is interesting because I've been procrastinating on this for, like, two months. Uh, no, the real thing that I that I've been slacking off on is blogging, and and that is my sort of choice form of writing. I like writing fiction, but I like blogging. And I mean, Wednesday posts are back after after the hiatus. Uh, Hex up is back now every Saturday, but every time I write a blog post and I hit publish, 
I think, man, remember that time, Jim, when you were writing your thesis and you wrote seven to eight blog posts a week? And it wasn't arduous. Like, I really liked it. I wrote about classical history, and I wrote about philosophy, I wrote about D&D &D and gaming and, and things like that. I did a bunch of news posts. I had a post on my own website that was designed purely to get my ass out of my house. Like, here's what I did this week. If I didn't do anything cool, I'm not going to write it. But with the, the message being that I should get out of my house and do something cool every week, because otherwise grad school will eat you. And I didn't want that. So, I don't do a lot of those anymore, and I'm, I'm sort of getting back into the swing of it, but I want to write more stuff. But every time I want to write more stuff, I think, oh, I got a lot of stuff to do, I gotta work out, I gotta, you know, I gotta, I, I could play the new Dragon Age, which I just got, I could watch other people play video games on YouTube, and I'm totally, I'm totally gonna get some work done while I'm doing it. I'm totally gonna sure. get some work done while I'm, while I'm doing that, and I maybe get a little bit done. Uh, and I just watch somebody play XCOM for three hours, which is fun, but it doesn't make me happy because at the end of the three hours I haven't written anything. So yeah, that's that's my that's my my thing that I'm procrastinating on currently, literally right now. <laughs> yeah. This is accomplishing something though. Oh, that, that's so, so, that's, so that's, that's the thing. Tool. Though. That's, that's the thing though. Is is is. I'm not convinced that accomplishing something is sufficient. Like you can, you, I mean, it's it's like cleaning your house when you don't want to do something. You're like, okay, well, I just I'm just gonna clean up, and you clean your house, and then your house is clean, which is great, but you still have to do that thing, whatever that thing was. Half, I don't know. Half, you really have to do anything. This is my problem with it. Like, like, I don't really have to do anything. How do you get anything done then? How do you work, Andrew? How do I work? Uh, slowly. Explain to us your functions. <laughs> Slowly. What do you do here? Oh. <laughs> I talk to the engineers. So, sorry. Um, <laughs> there has to be someone out there who hasn't seen that movie. Um, how do I work? Um, I love the sound of deadlines as they go whooshing by. <laughs> oh. Um, unless there's like actual, like tangible skin in the game, uh, I'm useless. I work. I, I work by doing nothing, at all. You're an object at rest. I am like inertia is like my friend, and not like the moving inertia. I'm like the sitting still inertia. Um, I just nerded out that you actually recognize that those are the two exact same things. I studied <laughs> physics. I studied <laughs> physics. He's a, he's a proper nerd. Don't you? Yeah. Um, so how do I work? Um, I have to write a lot of lists. I have certain compulsions that. Um, forbid me from being too chaotic with my life, so mm -hmm. I have to write a lot of lists. So I start with the things that uh, are required to be done soonest. So I just list them up. So like every day I gotta go to work, so that's a thing. Yeah. Uh, by default, Monday to Friday, I have this thing on my list called work. Great, and then I go to work, and the first thing I do in the morning is write my list. What's the thing that has to get done before anything else? So I write them all down, and then I, I procrastinate by writing more lists. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I procrastinate by organizing. It's like kind of like your cleaning house reference. I do that by I organize and get things squared away until I'm left with nothing but... But actually getting the work done. Yeah, so I've got nothing left. I've done all I can do to organize. See, I guess I have to start whatever's on you, top you, you of work, this list. You work by like last resort? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Oh man! It's, it's kind of how dinner gets prepared a lot of the time as well. Do, do your kids eat a lot of pizza? Is that My kids eat a lot of pizza. That makes sense. But there's there's this there's expiry dates on food, so a lot of the times if there's no nothing prepared for dinner, the list becomes what food is going to go bad first in my fridge. To the Google, that's, what can I make with this? That's amazing. So yeah, I'm, I'm a list-based worker who, who procrastinates. Guess what, kids? By... It's sour cream sandwiches today. <laughs> we have to go to Jim's house for the sour cream. It's important. Um, yeah, for strategic so sheet purposes. I'm a list guy. Fair enough. Fair you enough. Know, I'll, I'll organize and overorganize and analyze and, until I've got nothing left to do but accomplish whatever is on that list. I I love deadlines. I hit deadlines like black belts hit bricks. Like I. 
Love it. I mean, that's that's what I need is another human being to tap their foot and be like, listen, I need this done by now, you know, by tomorrow, by Friday, whatever. And it doesn't matter. At that point, if there's a real deadline, I will hit it. I have, you know, I was, I was freelancing for four or five months, and, you know, if it, it even, you know, and I will get out and do all kinds of other stuff while I'm doing it, but, you know, if that involves staying up until five in the morning, reading building codes and organizing slides, then that is what will happen. It will get done. Real deadlines are important. I love real deadlines. Yeah. So the problem is I don't have too many of them in my life. Yeah, like, like that's the thing. <laughs> the, the deadlines I set for myself, I'm like, you, you, need to, you need to write this. You need to get this blog post done. You need to get this video edited. And I'm like, yeah, but I, do I really need to? I can, exactly. I, can, I can do this in this other block of time that I know that I have that I probably totally won't sleep through. I get more stuff done tomorrow than any other day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> But if you would have said to me, look, Ryan and I can't do the, the podcast notes leading up to the show. Um, we need you to fill in some shit on the Google Doc. I would have been all over it. right? I would, I would have done that ahead of all the other things I had to do just because... Because it bumps up your list. You needed someone to do it. It wasn't like it needed to be done first, but no one else could do it. I was the guy. Mm-hmm. So you, whether or not I took that on or it was put on me, I'm in. Mm-hmm. So I would have like hopped right to it, um, but I don't get too many of those. Um, no one really like my kids need to eat. You know, I, have, I need to get paid, so I have to do work stuff adequately enough to not get fired, so I can continue to get paid. Other than that, I mean, I don't really have many of those deadlines. Fair enough. So but give yeah. me one, I'm all over it. Yeah, like, that's how I work too. Like when I, when I do work, it's it's. Like bursts of focus, and then fits of chaos. I occasionally attempt lists, and they often sit abandoned on my whiteboard for weeks. And at which point I will return to them and be like, yeah. And I did all the things on them, sort of eventually haphazardly, but they got done. Do you check them? Yes. Um, I require a check once, mark. Once, no, once I discovered the joy of checking, I, uh, I, I really like it. Yeah, check mark is it's an important... I feel like Eric, you're also a list guy, given that like you are the order and I am the chaos of this particular podcast. No, I, I actually use a lot of lists. Um, you have nine notebooks, I've seen them. <laughs> but my lists um, my lists are less for organization like an organizational purpose and more to just offload things from my memory so I don't have to think about it. I don't have to clutter my memory with trying to remember things you know I, I just externalize those lists so for example uh, one of the ways I work at work at the college is at the end of every week because I only work uh, 24 hours and I deliberately work Monday Tuesday Wednesday so when I leave Wednesday now I have four days until I come back to work which means I have four days to forget how to momentum. do job. well it's to forget. <laughs> I do that every Monday morning I'm like how do I do this again yeah, so what I got into the habit of doing this time, like this contract, is I bought a decent sized notebook and every Wednesday, which is like the Friday of my work week, I write a reflection on how I thought I worked this week, all of the immediate priorities I need to do Monday morning because somebody's relying on it, and then just accumulate a to-do list of all the other things that I want to do and just haven't really prioritized them. Um, so that way, I don't have to sit there because, uh, so I handle... 10 committees, 10 academic committees, three development committees, and then just this week I accepted three additional committees. So I'm doing... It's like a lot of committees. It's a lot of committee work uh, because it's... a it's, committee commitment. Yeah, well, and it's, and it's one person because oh, yeah. I function as a secretary. So I'm doing, I'm doing over 60% more committees than what the person was doing in this job before I took over, and I'm doing about... 50% more work than what I was doing when I first got hired on. Well, not 50, it's more like 40%, but I'm, do, I'm doing more work now than when I started. And, uh, and I've, I've even tried a new way of categorizing it. I, I've, uh, because I work in a metal cubicle, I don't have push pins on my walls, so I've taken, I use magnets to put up. even work. I don't know how they work. <laughs> but anyways. It's a um, mystery, man. I have these large blank spaces of, of the cubicle, so I, I've, I've tacked up the different committees 
uh, per column, and then under the column, I'm going to start attaching the action items. So I don't even have to like. Do, I can just look at so a glance. It's, so it's like extended cognition. You just you just pour your brain out everywhere into my environment. Yeah, neat. That is entirely what I do. Is I I just take take all that information out so that I can focus on thinking or problem solving or doing something else with my brain, and then just take all that stuff and offload it. Your brain can do all of that. I know I can, but but I'm training it to try to focus on other things because usually instead of remembering everything, now I can devote more time to procrastinating by reading articles. So you think you're gonna fill the gaps in with useful shit? No, I just <laughs> I'm just I'm just I can guarantee that's not gonna happen. No, I don't have any illusions that this makes me work better. It just makes it less likely for me to forget the little minor details uh, if I can just look and read it and be like, okay, yeah, yeah, and then okay, this needs to get done. And I do check it off as well, or on uh, any do. You know, swiping to, to strike it through. Oh, I know it's hotter these lights. Our guy was coming out. <laughs> I was cold when I left the house. Sorry. Um, I started writing stuff down because of my head injuries. I concussed a lot in high school, and my, my last concussion put me off work for a few months. Thank you. Um, so I started writing stuff down just because I was unreliable. Um, I couldn't rely on my head, and that really that didn't help my procrastination. Tendencies. Did I just make up a word? Sure. That's okay, we're both philosophers, we, we roll with it. Um, and I'm a writer, so yeah, I can do whatever the hell I want. Um, yeah, so that really, that was because I couldn't do anything. I was forbidden from doing anything. Just sit, stare, see that blank wall, stare at it. And when you get bored, keep staring at it. Um, so even if there was something to do, I just, I just have to do this. But I started writing shit down. Um, and then the compulsions took over. I must organize this in some way and then reorganize it because I wasn't quite happy with the order that it was in. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I, for a long time, I remember having a really good memory. I guess I still do, but I just have more and more stuff that I'm trying to, like I have more responsibilities that I'm juggling. I have more stuff that I want to do. And the result is that there are gaps. And I am not particularly good at sticking to systems. I mean, the, the, I find that the, the, the chief trigger for my procrastination is having something to do that I that I sort of remotely don't want to. Like, you know, it's, it's like, okay, well, well, if I deal with this right now, like, it's painless, it'll be, it'll be fine, I just have, like, send an email or whatever, but if I deal with this right now, it's done, and I know that. Then I go do something else briefly, or something to, to do, to do, and I dirtle around for a while. I'm just like, okay. But the whole time I know that if I just do this thing, I can continue my dirtling without worrying that I have to do this thing. <laughs> I use those little things that just can get done, like the, the what do you call it? the low-hanging fruit. Yes. Right? I use that as a Love tool. Love me some low-hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit for me is my procrastination. I will do these little useless bullshit things that they have to get done, right? It's just yeah. this administrivia that just takes over sometimes when you have a lot of things on the go at work or at home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I'll, just, I'll do all of those. And the, the, the big looming thing is just always looming. It's always yeah. just there in the yeah. corner looking over my shoulder. And I'll be like, but, but I'm doing. Look, look at me. I'm taking care of this. I'm taking yeah, care look of this. Yeah, look, look at me. Look at me doing doing all the easy stuff. I am that guy on the soccer pitch whose legs are moving feverishly, but he's going nowhere. <laughs> look at him. He's trying so hard. And he's just. He's like. For those of you listening, <laughs> Andrew is, is running oh my God, yes, we're radio. I keep forgetting the that. studio. We are. We're both. That some of this is not going to be seen. That's okay. Um, watch the video. <laughs> he seemed to try to run really fast with him. He did not <laughs> trip and hit the mic. That's what I'm impressed about. I I was actually going to get my water. Ah. But, uh, yeah, so what, what triggers your, pra your procrastination, Ryan? Uh, you know what? I'm sad to say the internet is a huge <laughs> trigger for me, and I've been trying to find <laughs> diff different ways of, of addressing that. Um, so, for example, I'm starting to make more uses of uh, Chrome extensions. So, for example, I use uh, Stay Focused when I'm at work. I've had it. I have it set from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. to block 
certain websites. That, so I'm not allowed to go in there. And you know, I mean, don't they already have like a filter for pornography at the college? <laughs> I don't. I would, to be honest, I wouldn't know because I've never tried it's going to pornography. They, they, but it's there's entirely possible. so many VPNs and yeah. stuff you can use. I mean, you, like, can, you can bypass proxy. Yeah, and you can by simply opening up the incognito mode. But uh, like Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, you know, all those are blocked from ten until four when I'm at work. And then today. Wow. I like I like the Pomodoro. I mean, I'm not I'm not good at sticking with the Pomodoro technique, which is pretty much just setting a timer. For those of us who yeah. don't know, um, which I think is me, what is the Pomodoro technique? Because it sounds sounds freaky. like some kind of hat dance. It, in a in a nutshell, it's a productivity system where you pretty much just set up an egg timer and you work for 25. It's like a small commitment. If you can commit to just working for 25 minutes, because it's a small amount of time, all you do is you just focus 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break. Then you do another, okay. so you, you switch back and forth between periods of work, periods of rest, then you you know do longer periods of rest at every four or so cycles, you know, like 30 minutes of rest to sure. go. And there's, there's a, another layer to that system in terms of tracking progress and learning how how you work in terms of pomodoro units so like it'll take me three pomodoros to do this task because i know how i work uh and eliminating distractions and stuff i don't really go that far into it but i started using the pomodoro technique at one point because um there's something comforting about listening to the ticking the ticking timer that that's the only thing. Like I'll put on some headphones and I'll just listen to the ticking timer. As Bombs I'm, also. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you worry me. I know. I know. I, I don't know. I guess I don't think about it. I, I I tried doing that for a while in grad school, like with with time, mm. and I find that I don't know. I manage time very poorly. Mm. But like for me, it's 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 about it's not so much about time as it is about task. Like I I I have a bunch of things that I have to do, mm. and so it's like do a thing you know like it's 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 that it's that same tendency that has me you know editing a video for eight hours or or something and then realizing i haven't eaten or done anything else because i'm just that i'm still doing that thing i will do whatever else when that thing is done mm. yeah but uh i'm just talking about in the context of <clears throat> triggers yeah so like um i find that I try to mitigate those triggers by shutting down the internet because even when I don't have the internet, I still frantically, I'm very, um, you're like listening to other people's lives and silently liking them a little bit. It's, it's just, I have, a, I have a hard time focusing, <laughs> focusing on like uh, serial tasks. I have, I, I, it's not that I believe I can multitask. In fact, I, I know that I can't multitask, but I, I don't have the willpower to stick to one task. I'll be doing something and then I'll think about something else and so I'll change gears and do something else, um, which is why I write stuff down a lot of times. It's okay, I'm not going to work on this now, but let me write this down so I don't forget it. And then let's... Everything is a trigger for me, which is a problem. Like, <laughs> like everything, if it can be thought of, it will distract me enough away from what I'm doing unless something is really on the line like i really need a hard critical deadline or else like i'm just some days i'm just begging for someone to send me a text message so, i will just look at my phone like come on someone's got to send me a text message just anybody come on and someone will and i'll be like yes i am gonna start sending you text messages and it's because they're going to say get back to work i will not like those i don't <laughs> think <laughs> No, the best would be if you started sending him texts at regular intervals, but he doesn't realize that. He associates it with some sort of task and, like, magical thing he occurs of, like, when I pick up this pen, you know, Jim texts me. <laughs> Every time I eat pizza, I get a text from Jim. It doesn't say eat more pizza? No, it'll say get back to work. I'll be like, oh, man, I'm at home. I like pizza, though. Maybe that's a good accountability thing. It's just your friends randomly text you, get back to work. When we did that... Um, that's what I have a boss for. He sits beside me, and every time he we, looks we, over and I'm doing anything, he's like, ah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm we like, we experimented with that maybe two, two years ago, three years ago, two years ago, I think, with the uh, Conspiracy of Awesome, mm -hmm. which was... Which which may enter another pilot phase at some point. It was it was pretty successful. Um, the medium was, was lacking. We did it all over email. Mm -hmm. But it was that idea that every week you would set... 
or you, you would set goals. And it would be like, you know, everybody, there was no rules about what the goals were or anything like that. Everybody had different stuff. Um, I remember one of your goals went viral. Yeah. Through, through our, our tiny test group of ten people, um, the idea was that y you would check on two people's goals. Mm -hmm. And two people would check on yours. And it worked in sort of this big chain. And so you had actual human beings who, after a week, would check in and be like, hey, this is what you were going to do. How's that going? Like us, like agile friendship. Sure. I didn't understand. You got you that? No. Jim didn't get it. I, I know. One of two, <laughs> two of my committees rely on like agile stuff. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know much it about is. it. But it's just that notion of, of, of what are you doing? And then at the end of two weeks, they check in with you again. And for every goal that you have not done, you owe the conspiracy a doll. I like money. You can buy yeah, well that's exactly this could be a strategy that could work. You can for buy uh, you can buy off your goals if you're having a really bad week. Like it's not like you know, oh I would totally be doing if that. You're, but that's the thing <laughs> if, you're, if your week is totally f, then you'd be like okay well it's five bucks or ten bucks or whatever. It's not a big deal. But if it's but but even even if you're buying it off, um, we did it for I think three months, and the thing that we learned what and you learn it really quickly is how, what you care about. The stuff that you will continue, you're willing to continually buy off is really not stuff that matters to you in the sort of longer scheme of things. Or people, would, I, we had a couple people look at it and be like, you know, for, for, for three, like two week cycles, I bought this goal off. How do I feel about that? See, I, I come from this unfortunate position where I have enough of an income so what you're saying unless, is you'd, ra you'd rather owe the conspiracy a hundred dollars. Yeah, you can arrange that. Unless it's a, a big number. <laughs> this is how we fund the podcast from now on. Right. Is by Andrew's procrastination. Unless it's a big enough number, I'm just gonna be like, yeah, that's totally because my time to do nothing is worth more to me than a lot of things. Because yeah. I enjoy. I don't sleep very well. Andrew's um, buying me a car. <laughs> well, it's either that or he has, to, he has to give the money to some something that he doesn't value, like. Here you go, Westboro Baptist Church. Holy shit, here's, that'll do it. Here's, <laughs> here's 100 bucks because I couldn't, you know, exercise. That seems horrible. Like, I know. Oh my I, god, that's I, a terrible there way no, to get There are no done. circumstances under which I would recommend giving money to the Westboro Baptist Church. Then you better hit your goals, buddy. No, but like, <laughs> even, but that's the thing is then if you have a, a, a week where that's like super impactful or something, where, where, you know, you have a tragedy or something atypical has happened, you have this choice between do I follow through on my commitment and give this, you know, heinous hate group my money and help them cause... There is no point at which I would want to contribute to a thing that does nothing but cause pain and anguish in the world. Mm. It's the same reason why I wouldn't give that money to people to buy meth or bullets. Like, it just... At that point, I am my not doing my goals is... Actively causing harm to human beings. I suppose in that case you would need an accountability buddy who can make the decision as to whether or not it's acceptable for you to renege on your goals. Right. So for example, it's like, oh, Jim, you had a death in the family. I think that is a legitimate reason why you should not have to pay if you... I don't know, no, 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 there's another human being that's capable of judging that. Well, you'd have to trust the person to yeah. make those yeah, judgments. Just be like trust a isn't, trust isn't really to experience, though. But yeah. the whole like accountability, like that, that's good, but it has to be punitive. Yeah. Like so, if you're talking a buck here, a buck there, like shit, I can just knock go out for lunch one week. Yeah. And have potato chips at my desk, and that buys me six, seven, eight hours on the couch. All right, I'm yeah. doing that every day of the week, twice <laughs> on fucking Sunday, <laughs> because I enjoy my time when I'm doing nothing. Yeah. Um, my brain's very active. Um, so I I really covet. The times when I can allow it to not be. I call those times sleeping. I don't sleep though. That's true. That's, that's the thing, right? I'm a very poor sleeper. Um, so for me, like a strategy um, is to have deadlines that matter for things that matter. Yeah. And be comfortable with the fact that I'm just not going to make as much progress on a lot of other things as a result. Um, yeah, for me it's usually either I will write a day off 
Like if I if I you know if I if I sit there playing video games for four hours or something, and I'm like, okay, Saturday I'm gonna play video games for four hours. Here are the things I need to get done this weekend. I'm running today off. That will create enough pressure on the next day that I will get all that stuff done, and it will be good. Uh, I remember in university, and every once in a while, like t two or three times a year, I will purposefully over binge. I did it, or the first time I did it was uh, just... On sour cream? No, no, on, on, on whatever it is that I think that I want. I remember just after I finished my undergrad, like I, you know, I wrote my last exam, was done, and I was like, okay, now I have no more excuses to like not start blogging or not start a whole bunch of stuff that I want to do because I didn't start grad school for another four months. And I proceeded to not do a lot of things. I didn't feel very good about that. I was playing a bunch of video games, and so I was like, you know what? Fine. Jim, me, if, if you want to play video games, what? Why don't you just video game the whole pack? And so I played non-stop video games for three days, for 18 hours a day. And by the end of that, I did not want to play video games anymore, and I sucked it up and I got to work. <laughs> I was just like, the thought of, of picking up Fallout again was just like, no, I have to do anything else. I'll binge the other direction to allow myself the time to do nothing <laughs> for a long period wiser. of time. Right? It does seem wiser. Like, hey. So for... In no every November, I'll write a book, right, as part of Nano. Yeah. And I always start off with, by the end of the first week, I have two days buffer or, th or three days buffer, ideally. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I'll have written ten days worth of stuff in, in a span of seven days or less. Because I know I'm, I, I won't make it through the month unless I can take an entire 24-hour stretch and do sweet fuck all. Yeah. Um, I think that's important. That's something I've discovered in working out. Because um, I started. Sometimes you just have to work out for eighteen hours straight. No, 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 no not, not quite. But I started in August uh, and then broke my ankle in November, so I'm only just getting back into it. But one of the things that I did, um, I gave myself permission to fail every once in a while, um, without feeling guilty about it. And that's something that I didn't really realize when I was say writing my thesis or whatever, where you would, you know, you're supposed to be working procrastinate, but you don't forgive yourself for it, and then you end up feeling worse, which actually derails you further. I find yeah. that if every once in a while, you know, it's like, um, I can't make my three days this week, or I did really poorly in the gym, or, you know, just something, instead of instead of feeling bad about what I should have did, it's like, oh well, like, let's just wash my hands of that one and I'll try again tomorrow. I'm expert at doing that. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I, Andrew washes his hands like 19 <laughs> times a day. Uh, I suppose I suppose that uh, there's the flip side of it that if you give yourself permission to fail too much, then then there's a, there's a problem in the other direction. But um, you're like, here's my to do list of things I'm going to fail at this week. Yeah. So you have to know what success tastes like, right? So yeah. You, and only you can define it. Yeah. Um, with with possible exception of people who employ you. Um, but for the most part, you can, you can define it. Once you know what it is, I think it's a lot harder to dip into that downward spiral of procrastination. Like, yeah. believe me, I'm, I'm an expert. It's, procrastination is my second favorite Asian. Um, I'm good at it. So... Everybody just suddenly tries to... <laughs> no, I know exactly what it is. <laughs> no, no, but I can, I can see. Like, you just, like, you phase out of the conversation for a minute. Your mind went elsewhere. <laughs> Um, like, what could it buy? Oh, you're right. Oh, right. I prefer imagination. <laughs> but I know what success feels like. I prefer mastication. So procrastination doesn't take over. Because I know I'm going to, at some point, I'm going to get the urge to feel that success again. Yeah. Um, so I'm procrastinating. What am I procrastinating? Three writing projects right now. Um, you know, for me, publishing isn't the big thing. It's, it's finishing. Um, so now that I've got an idea for a book, um, I'm starting to get the itch. So I'll be off my couch soon. Not this week, not next week, but maybe the week after I'll be off my couch soon. And I'll be heads down, just like balls to the wall, going so that I can get those breaks. Um, 
and I'll taste success. I'll finish in a, in a couple months, and, and then I'll do nothing for like six months. You know, one piece of success is lasting. Know how long your success lasts, and then work on that schedule. I think that's the key to happiness through procrastination. Mine's like five minutes. Really? Yeah. I'm like, oh, done. Now what? Oh, Shit. next. Next I hate, thing. I hate not having something else. That's that's a. Uh, uh, I as much as I hate the idea of having to be busy, I find that when I feel like there's nothing else to do, like when I wrap up a project or whatever, it's kind of like mm -hmm, this is really empty. I want to I want to get busy again, kind of deal. I want to sleep well, don't you? Uh, no, because I I'm, I have poor poor will to go and like go to bed at appropriate times. And then, uh, and then I, I find up. when I when I do get sleep, which is, it's rare, but when I do get sleep, I get so much done mm -hmm. the next day. I'm just, I just feel like doing. I, I sleep like a robot. Like I fall asleep at a certain hour. I wake up at another hour, and then I continue working. And it's uh, always the same hours. Yeah, I, I don't, but that's also largely because I work a, a day job and a night job. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, have, I, a, luck I have a swing shift, but I cannot remember the last time I woke up feeling refreshed. I usually wake up feeling groggy or... That's usually a sign that you live in some kind of dystopian future. Or I probably have, like... Obesity induced sleep apnea. I don't know, but I don't know. fair enough. But there's there's probably lots of reasons why, but it's not that it's debilitating. It's just I cannot remember the last time I felt refreshed waking up. Like oh man, like I feel I feel great. Usually it's for some other reason why. Like I, I the strangest feeling when I broke my ankle and I was way late in bed. I had this huge emotional connection with the world. I just like loved everybody in the world kind of deal. It was you on pain, pain medication. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not take a lot of pain meds. For the first like four <laughs> days I needed it. Afterwards I didn't need it except to sleep. But I, I just like, I, maybe it was just because I knew I couldn't get human connection, but I like would reach out in other ways. I would just, I don't know, it's like everybody's awesome. Everything is awesome. And it's not, no, it wasn't the pain meds. That's weird. That was weird. It that was. Is. It was weird. I, normally, I'm very kind of like I hate the world kind of deal. But wow, well, uh, people in general kind of suck. Maybe it's well, just because I kind of, <laughs> I kind of like them. I love lots of people. I, I dislike a lot of people. Well, that seems okay. <laughs> yeah, that seems normal. But yeah, I, I, I guess lots. I guess the 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 the, the procrastination strategies are um, give yourself hard deadlines, get lots of sleep. Take care of yourself so you don't die, and have a have a plan. Yeah, have some kind of plan. Yeah. Having some kind of plan for doing that. I am the worst at having a plan. Like I love you, planning. If you can break <laughs> it down, like it's the planning idea. Planning is of, literally your job. <laughs> it's, true. <laughs> it's true. But I mean, if you can break a task down, the idea of like how do you eat an elephant one spoonful at a time kind of deal, right? You know, if you can break it down into much more manageable. I mean, that was the only way I got through my thesis. Especially because I didn't know when I first started the thesis what I was writing it on. It wasn't until I got to the third chapter that I started to even stitch it together. I took yeah. three three disparate chapters and, and made a one cohesive yeah, argument. Yeah, that didn't bother me at all for thesis, but we'll save that for another podcast. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what do you procrastinate on? Procrastinate by leaving a comment and letting us know. Andrew, plug your blog. Potatochipmath.com. It's in the show notes. It's also over Ryan's face. No, it isn't because it's not a YouTube link. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. Stupid YouTube. Well, you can you can, you can annotate it in Photoshop. Why wouldn't I link to my blog? Yeah. Don't let you link to anything on YouTube. Anyway, yeah. 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 Potatochipmath.com, all one word. Nice. Dot com. Yes, it is awesome. There's all kinds of fun skeptic and writing stuff, occasional math. General advice, sometimes things about hockey. If you leave comments, I'll blog more. Andrew has a comment addiction. So do we. Oh my god. I love comments. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. I'm Andrew. Stay awesome. Because the punishment for your phone going off in the podcast is A, we dance to it. And that is not something you want to experience. And B, that's a preview. Then we like smash it with a hammer or something. Okay, well, that is my primary way of solving mobile issues. <laughs> <laughs>